This video is all about filter 2.1. Oh. Oh. Now I've found that you can actually do a regular drip. A uh, decent espresso actually sells a basket just for that. You can see there's little holes. The pressure comes out perfectly when you put this underneath your machine and then you can spray water directly over your drip. It makes a great pour over. However, with the filter 2.1, I found it's actually very similar, very similar strength and the mouthfeel is kind of nice as well. So it's kind of like a cool mix of like, like, a, like an Australian espresso, like a long espresso or Americano, but it's also the strength of a drip. So let me show you. So this is a photo, like digital photo album I always use. It's pretty much always on. And after two years, the battery on this tablet bloated. It kind of like puffed up like a balloon. Just letting you know, you're probably gonna have to replace the battery, but now they even have battery bypassing kits. So that way that, that won't happen. But this is just a simple plug in, you tap it. And I'm always using the DSX Skin. That's a really nice skin I like to use because there's three presets that I always pretty much use. You can program each one of these. And that's 95% of what I do with this. And then it's really nice because you can see the, the charts with a single button. And with this machine, there's tons of presets. So when you guys are selecting a profile, you can actually uh, read the description right here. In this case, it even tells you the instructions on how to actually make it. And Filter 2.1 is designed by Scott Rayo. Scott is a kind of a coffee expert. He teaches people how to make great coffee around the world. With this one, you're gonna actually put a paper filter on the bottom and you're gonna kind of rinse it with some water here. And that helps kind of adhere the paper to the bottom. It sticks really well if you, if you see that. And then we're gonna grind a little coarse, kind of make it somewhere like around 25 I found. For me, that little dot right there, that's actually a pretty good indicator. If you come over here too much, it just doesn't work as well. So I think just a little coarser than espresso. Espresso is 15 to 20 for me. And so just go somewhere between 20 and 30, that's kind of a good range. And I found with really great coffee, consistency is key. Always change a few variables at a time. So you can see these little jars that fill about 20 grams of beans. And this helps me stay consistent and I can do a ton of beans. I can weigh at one time and have beans for like the whole week. Makes it easy. With this recipe, you're gonna WDT the grounds a little bit. I don't have a metal filter, a metal mesh filter to go on top, but I'm just gonna give it a lot of taps. You can even tamp it if you like. You don't really have to. So as you can see, I got a little indentation here. It's not perfect. It doesn't have to be. These will all expand with water anyway, so it doesn't really matter that much. Filter 2.1 is selected. All we gotta do is push this button here and you're gonna see it's gonna kind of run out kind of gushy, runny. It looks ugly, but it tastes great. As you can see, it's a really slow pre-infusion and it's kind of ugly, but man, does it taste good. This step in the phase is called the bloom. So blooming espresso is a different profile, but we're taking a lot of the same concepts to increase our extraction here. As you can tell, the machine's kind of loud. And when it comes to 2.1, I found that the biggest thing is not the time, it's not the pressure, it's just maybe getting a, about a three to one ratio of extraction. So if I put 20 grams in, I want about 60 grams out. And you know, if that goes up to the ramp and I cut halfway through, that works just as well. If you go a little bit longer, you can get a little bit more stringent. Um, but really just go, you know, do a three to one ratio. Don't worry about the time or pressure. And also I've noticed uh, you can focus more on dilution with water when you're done. You can add a little bit of water or you can add a little bit less water. If it's fruitier, maybe just a little bit more, but that's about it. It's super forgiving and super simple. Here's the graph and what I actually see, I'm actually extracting throughout this whole blooming phase, even though it looks flat because it's a coarse grind. I'm actually getting quite a bit of liquid. And then this ramp phase, I'm actually stopping somewhere around there. So the ramp phase is actually pretty short, but that's when you get around 60 grams. Now we have to dilute it to make it the appropriate strength. So we have to come over here to water and it, it says it wants 250 or to 200, 250 mils of water. And I'm gonna make the water kind of cool so I can drink it and enjoy it right away. Then we just gotta push this water button. Makes a big mess, doesn't it? It kind of splashes everywhere, even with the new firmware. Moment of truth here. I mean, it really is that good. Especially if you had like a light roast or a, like a fruity kind of blended coffee. I mean, I don't think it gets much better than that. Good job, Scott. And I think this probably could be the future of a lot of coffee. It's kind of like an AeroPress 
a drip, an espresso, all combined in one. And so with concepts from Blooming Espresso, we're able to kind of make pretty much anything and get you know extractions of like 25%. So it's just great what you can do now with modern coffee, software, firmware, updates, things like that. The, the machine keeps getting free updates. So things are getting a little better every year. I think in the future, I would probably just wait for the battery pack to you know get rid of that completely. Other than that, the Decent has been awesome. Let me know if you guys have any questions and have a great day. What are you doing with my coffee? A cup of coffee in the morning, drink a cup of coffee. And now it's time for the cleanup, am I right? Oh my lord.